Hello, I'm Lana Kay. It's great to be with all of you again, and I hope you stay tuned because we have a very, very important topic planned for you today, preventing home invasion. Here with us is Sergeant Keith Begley. Welcome to the show, Sergeant Begley. Thank you, ma'am. Good to be here. Sergeant Begley is with the Boone County Sheriff's Department, and I attended recently one of his presentations. It was so, so very informative. And first of all, Sergeant Begley, let's clarify the difference in home invasion and a burglary. Right. Home invasion is typically looked at as when someone comes into your home, invades your privacy, while there's actually people still in the dwelling. So the building that they're coming into or the residence is occupied. Whereas a burglary is usually looked at as someone coming in while there's no one inside. It could be a burglary of a barn or of a house or, or whatever. And anything on your property, any breaking in to your property. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, as I said, I attended one of his presentations and I was surprised at one point, Sergeant Bagley said, how many of you here have experienced this in your life? And the hands that went up. So if you haven't experienced it, you're very lucky. And Sergeant Bagley, before, before you give us the steps mm -hmm. on what we can do, how does this affect people? Uh, it has a huge effect when you talk to people. Uh, actually, uh, my father was actually a victim of this, but when you talk to people, it's not just the fact that someone broke your property and stole your stuff. There's a lot of emotional attachment that goes with it because it is kind of an intimate type of crime because someone is coming into your house where you and your family uh, assume that you're safe. I think it's one of those things until it happens to you, uh, you just would never know the damaging effect. So Sergeant Begley, start us off. We're going to prevent that effect from happening to us. All right. Well, as you said, a lot of people, this does affect you. Be surprised. I'm not a statistics guy, so I don't have the statistics for you. However, what we mainly want to focus on is being proactive instead of reactive. We don't want it to happen to us and then try to take the steps to correct it because by then it's already too late. So ideally, if we can go out before we're a victim of it and start making our what we call a soft target into a hard target. Which is so, so important. So give us our first tip on what you'd like us to think about. So. To me, the best ways of uh, trying to prevent it, uh, we want to keep them out of the house before they ever get into it. So we don't, uh, well, ideally, if you can get some lighting put up, which is motion sensor lighting, to try to deter people. Uh, if you can put motion detectors outside, not just for lighting, but also there's uh, inexpensive alarms that you can buy that detects when someone's coming up your driveway or there's movement in your yard that will set off just basically like a door chime or an alarm inside your house. Uh, so, you know, that's part of it is, is making it uh, highly visible. Another part is you can go out and buy actual cameras to put up out there. And while the cameras and the lights do not physically stop people from being able to get into your house, it does serve as a deterrent. And so if they look at your house and it has cameras and lights and other people around you do not, they're probably most likely going to pick the house that they feel they can get into without being caught. Okay, so Sergeant Begley, would we want that camera to be where you can, the, the burglar, you know, the robber could say, there's a camera there, people, I, the other guy. I personally, I would like to have them both. I like to have one that's visible so that they can see it, right. and then another one maybe that's not so visible. I want them to know that one's there. However, I don't want them to be able to take that one camera out, and then I and don't, then I don't have anything to video with. Very good. Okay. What's next? Um, you know, let, let your neighbors know. Obviously, if you care about them, you don't want to drive them from your house to their house, so, so tip them on this also. Um, so those are some of the things to try to deter people from mm -hmm. targeting your house. Uh, one of the things that they like to do is to kick in the door. So if you don't have those things and you've decided or they've decided to use your home, that there's things that are very simple that you can do. A lot of people don't 
don't do, including home builders or the residents themselves, is on your doors, when you buy them, they usually come with a three inch screw. Yes. And the strike plate, which is where the latch goes in from the door mm -hmm. into the door frame, mm -hmm. those only have little bitty one to one or half inch to one inch screw in there. You should take the, the half inch or the one inch out and use those three inch screws to run that latch sure. plate in so that it's not just the door frame, it's actually going into the frame of the house. Right, it won't let go there. Right, so if, when people, if, if you don't use the longer screws, if someone goes up and kicks the door, the only thing that's keeping the door shut is a little piece of wood. Whereas if you run the three inch screws, it's the whole frame of the house that's holding that on. That is so important. And not only for the... And uh, easy. Yes, it is. Relatively and, easy. And expensive. Sure. And, right. And right. So uh, not only would I do it on the latch plate, but I would also put one or two on the hinge side of mm -hmm. the door. Mm -hmm. So since we're talking about doors also, uh, with windows, you, there's some things that you can do for those. Uh, I don't promote product, certain products, but you can look online. There's actually uh, transparent film that you can put on windows that will help them be shatter resistant so it's not as easy for someone to break PK. those out. And then also on doors and windows, you can put alarm systems on it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of up to you of how expensive you go. Mm -hmm. You can go to local retailers and buy very inexpensive ones that just sets off an alarm that you'll be able to hear if the door or window opens. Or you can go out and, and pay for a professional to come in. Come in and, and it right, and they wire it and monitor it and all of that. Uh, one of the ones, unfortunately, I've had the opportunity to respond to quite a few burglar alarms around here. And one of the ones I found most effective is they actually had a speaker up on top, the hidden on the house. So when their alarm went off, that it started, it was a loud noise that all the neighbors could hear saying burglar, burglar. Hey. So it gets their attention and hopefully the the suspect then runs off. Never even heard of that. So that's and as far great as I know, point. great point. As far as I know, that one wasn't even monitored. Mm -hmm. uh, but by the way they had it set up, obviously it drew attention, and one of the neighbors and called and we responded. And that's what you want to do is right. to make them want to leave. Now, they may not. There, I'm here. Absolutely. I got to get out of here. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, another tip and. Whenever you are at your house and you set your stuff down, especially at night, and mostly this goes for the ladies, but also men, is do not set your purse or your wallet, checkbook, any of that valuable stuff sitting like right on the kitchen counter where you can, uh, someone can walk up, look in your window, see it's there. Uh, sometimes, you know, they want to do what they just call a smash and grab. They bust mm -hmm. out the window and as quick as they can. Especially, I bet, grab with it. the heroin yes. epidemic that a smash and grab would even be uh, the, you increasing. see you do see that you know the, the crime rates go up a little bit and then I think your topic is very timely because we're starting to move into the holiday seasons oh. and and these start to go up a, a little bit mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, once they you also need to have a plan though for if you are at your house you were talking about home invasions in particular so you and your family are still there you should try to come up with a plan inside your house of what you're going to do and not just you coming up with a plan like if it was my house I also need to let other members in that household know what the plans are we need a family meeting right of oh. this is what we're all going to do if the worst should happen absolutely right. just just like you should take your your children and practice fire drills with them you don't have to scare them or anything. You can try to make it fun. They don't have to know exactly what you're drilling for. But if you, uh, you know, you hear someone, the plan is go into the kids' room, get the kids gathered up, take them to your room, whatever the plan may be. But make sure you include everybody, everybody in that plan. in the house. And have a, uh, a meeting point that if... If you decide, if you hear someone coming in, that your plan is to get out of your house, mm -hmm. have a meeting place of where you're going to go to. Mm -hmm. And if it's your neighbor's house, please well, let your neighbors know. If you're coming know. in the front door, is it good to go out the back door and go to help? If, if you, to the neighbors if you've got close neighbors. Yes. If, if My thing is there's no personal property worth anyone getting hurt or killed right. over. So if you can get all your family members and get them out of the house, you've won the you game. can get out. 
Okay, very good. All the other stuff can be replaced. Right. Now, now, Sergeant Bagley, with all this uh, concealed carry and, mm -hmm. you know, so many citizens are now wanting guns, carrying guns and all that, so, w you're t you know, I would rather flee. I would hope that I would never have to shoot someone and I don't have my concealed carry, nor do I want it. Mm -hmm. but, if, but if they do decide to go that route, it w if it would get really dangerous, I mean, the psychological effect of that, too, I think is a lot more than people ever think about. Uh, that is a wonderful point. Uh, if, you so if you decide that you are going to stay in your home, and if you are a CCDW holder, or even if you're not, if you have firearms in the house or whatever the weapon may be, if that is something that, that you think is an option for you, you need to think about that beforehand and make sure that you are committed to using that before you introduce that weapon into the scenario. Uh, I guess the way I would like to say it is if, if you have a firearm in your house and you aren't convinced that you could use it if you had to, do not pull it out because the suspect that's coming into your house, they might be willing to use it on you mm -hmm. and you've just introduced a weapon to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that violence is the answer. When it is the answer, sometimes it's the only answer, but you need to make sure that you're willing to use it before you introduce it into that environment. I think that's so very important, um, Sergeant Begley. So many people, I can just tell that they feel very uh, uh, assertive now, and I've got my concealed carry, and, and that just takes so much more, and I know you've been through all the training mm -hmm. and all that. There's so much more to all of that. Right, and even even if you think that you can use it, you, you need to when sit really down comes and think that there is a, a emotional it's a baggage that comes with it now. Yes. Right, right. It's very different. It's not just a piece of paper. That's right. So, so it, uh, you know, as far also as, you know, people coming into your house, again, have that plan, talk to your neighbors ahead of time. Great. Uh, sure. Let them, let them know some of the things that you've put in so that, hey, if you see that light pop on that I put out there, you know, would you mind looking outside? It shouldn't be coming on. We're not outside any time after this. We don't have pets, whatever, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Uh, and you guys, the neighbors look out for each other and, and call. And I mentioned pets a second ago. That also is another good deterrent, is uh, if you have a dog outside and especially inside, a lot of, a lot of people don't want to get, get bit. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was. But I was at a training and they had talked about a case where the suspects had a map and they had certain houses X'd off and when they were caught they asked them about the X's and they told them that that's where there were dogs inside of the houses so they, they, they weren't going to mess with those. So They'd already checked it out and right. we're not going where the dogs are. How important, how great. And not only do they not want to get bit but also that's a dog is a great alarm system. Usually if they start to hear something, they're going to bark and let you know if you're inside the house. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, so we all might want to get a dog. <laughs> uh, I don't think my cats can help me, Sergeant no. Begley, so maybe I'll be thinking about a dog. What else have you got, want us to think um, about? Some other items are if you can put a, a wide-angle peephole on your door so that you do not have to have to open the door if someone knocks on it. Um, one of the things I'm not really a, a big fan of are the chains where you can actually open the door up a little bit and it has the chain on there because those aren't extremely strong and also it goes back to the type of screws that you use to, to put it in there. So better to keep the door shut, have the three inch screws in the strike plate and the hinges and then look through the peephole to see if you know see what you want to do and there's also going back to the alarm systems there's a lot of a lot of them these days that are not that expensive that you can actually pull up on your smart devices your uh, laptop smartphone whatever and actually see who's standing at the front door and you can actually communicate with them over the speaker on there you don't ever have to open the door for them well, let's just go with this scenario mm -hmm. um sergeant begley it's a ruse Mm -hmm. And and someone's out there. Oh, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. Or can you just help me? My car's broke down. Please help me. You know, any kind of thing like that. Then then what 
what is our response? What's our best response? We've got the, we've got the, our big screw in. Mm -hmm. we're, we're behind there. We see them. That, that is going to have to be a, a judgment call. If you're going strictly on your safety, then you're better off where you are. Let them know, hey, I'm calling for help. Uh, call 911 mm -hmm. and try to find out as much information from them as you can so mm -hmm. that you can provide it to the 911 operators mm -hmm. so that they can get medical, fire, police, whoever they need out there for what's going on. Uh, you know, that, that's a, a tough thing to do if you're a compassionate person. Yes. And, it and comes down to trust. Like you said, too, maybe if, you, if they're bloody and they say, we've just wrecked the car, help us, then maybe we will. And what about women? I, I've read some articles lately where there's a, women, a woman accomplice. Most people say mm -hmm. a woman can't hurt me, especially guys. And so the woman is there, but there is also other people. So you can't be too careful, right. maybe. Again, I'm not a statistic. No, I'm not statistic you. driven, but it, normally it's usually males that, that do stuff like this. That's However, right. there are a lot of females that get involved. As you said, it's kind of a ruse. People tend to trust women mm -hmm. a little more. Mm -hmm. So if a woman comes there and knocks on a door and you feel sorry for them, and you might invite them in or mm -hmm. step out. So it's uh, it, you can't give a, a blanket statement of what True. to do. There's a lot of individual circumstances and your past experiences it's going to play into that of sure. whether you should help by going outside or letting them in or help just by saying hey I'm calling for mm -hmm. for 911 to stay right. there please stay there but we do have to think don't just yeah. automatically do anything absolutely you know I don't I don't want to say that you can't be compassionate right. to people right. but but don't let your guard down to the point where uh, you're just Right. Open oh, for the taking. Isn't that, isn't that oh, it's so eye-opening, all of, all of the things you've told us. Anything else you'd like us to know, uh, Sergeant uh, Bagg? You can. Uh, you can do it if you want for all your doors, but you don't want to live paranoid. But they actually do make, like, door, door stops where you can put, it's kind of like a club that goes from the floor up to the doorknob. So, you know, if your plan is to grab grab the kids, get into the, my room, at least maybe have one there so you can try to barricade the door a little more. If it doesn't stop them, it'll at least slow the person down that's trying to get that's, in. That's a really good point. And again, to me, the, the big thing behind this is just never, even if it's something that's been in your family for years and years and years, and it's a, an it's heirloom that you don't want to get rid of, is no property is worth your life or the life of others and uh, even if you think that there's a piece of property that it's worth your life I'm sure that your loved ones don't feel that way so oh if it comes down to it just secure yourself all the other stuff can be replaced but take care of the the lives in your family Sergeant Begley with that I think we'll in the show we're out of time and what a great point there that you know nothing is worth our life and um, we have learned so much. I, I told you to stay tuned. We have learned so much from you today, Sergeant Bagley. Thank you for coming out and being with us. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. You've been listening to Sergeant Keith Begley. He is with the Boone County Sheriff's Department. His contact information will follow. As always, you be happy and keep smiling, and I'll see you soon.